so hey dp uh, today we are going to design a system like instagram so, so instagram is a photo sharing service where people can upload photos and other can see them share them and other things so you, if you have used instagram then you might be knowing mm -hmm. yeah I okay. instagram i haven't used it <laughs> so okay. But, but yeah, yeah if you have any questions of what is instagram i would be happy to answer that but right now yeah. think uh, any other uh, application where people can upload download share right. photos yeah okay. so you talked about i just want to uh, or maybe we can go over it so yeah so essentially we are talking about a photo sharing service right and uh, i mean instagram so is it like uh, can you so I want to first go over the features like that we want in a, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of a minimum viable version of the application. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, like what's the customer base like? Is it like for a small community internally we are developing the service, service or is it expected to grow like or make it public? So think in that way, uh, we are launching this right now for United States. And okay. then we would cover entire North America and South America. Okay. But right now we'll start with uh, United States. Uh, we'll launch in the United States. Okay. Um, but growth expected if needed. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, because this would kind of help me with the non-functional requirements. Mm -hmm. So now, um, Thinking of the basic feature set, mm -hmm. um, I like to think in terms of functional and non-functional. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the core functionality, mm -hmm. I would say some of the things I can think of is like, um, we are talking about photo sharing, right? So it's just, I, I assume it's just pictures and not like any videos or anything. So right now, a uh, user can upload both uh, photos and videos. Okay. So the content wise, it can be image or videos. Yes. And in terms of like, so content is photos or videos, but mm -hmm. uh, the actions or the features can be upload or I assume in that case, download as well. Yes. User can upload and download both. Right. Um, and what about like, is, does it also support like the typical uh, likes or comments? Uh, right now, uh, I think in version one, it's okay if you don't have likes and comments, you can keep there, but uh, that could be in the future. Okay. And uh, what about the, what, like there is sharing in general in a lot of these apps. Do we support that? Do we consider that in the first version? No, right now, let's make it simple. Uh, that would also come later. And uh, what about like uh, notifications, like something like feed or something? Uh, yes, I would uh, like something to have in my V1 because if uh, if people want to see what is happening around them, otherwise... Yeah, I mean, this would be typical. I would, you know, in any social media, we get like... Yes, without that, I won't be able to launch where people can't see things happening around them. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that point. So basically what I'm saying that if I don't have this feature, I will not be able oh, to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Because right. people, they can upload, download, but if they don't be able to see things. Right. Then it won't be just, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it will be just a storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what other feature can I think of? Um, I mean, is there anything specific that you can point me to that I'm missing? Um, so uh, I would say something like search, but that can also come later. Okay, search like photos or videos. Okay. Yeah, people can search, but so, still we can come, okay. we can circle back on that later. Okay, okay. So does that? So I would say like focusing on first and this mm -hmm. one good then. Okay. Yeah. And coming to like non-functional, um, mm -hmm. like you said, even if I assume it's like US customer base, still, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, I mean, looking at the number of users, right? One is registered users. That is different. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking in terms of what is my active users per day, let's say. Mm -hmm. Right. So would it be fair 
I'm just giving a ballpark. Like, would it be fair to say about 100K per day or more than 100K plus? I, I'm just. So I think that this could be a popular uh, website. So I would say. <laughs> yeah, I could have a 1 million. Uh, okay users or if if you want to start with the lower number i'm okay we can start with 100k if that is uh, helpful for your okay. around that okay okay uh, so that's that and uh, so this this is your active users per day and how about your registered users yeah registered the reason is that it, they will they might they will probably be more you know mm -hmm. if i consider 1 million uh but i am not as of now as i'm thinking I am more, my mind is more leaning towards this because mm -hmm. registered users is more like the way I maintain them. It's like, it won't evolve, like grow, like, you know, as fast as active, you know, I have to manage active users in a different way. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, in general, I would consider registered users. I'm thinking in terms of I'm leaning more towards how I'm going to store this information or how mm -hmm. information is going to change. Um, mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I think the rate of growth of registered users may be fast in the beginning, but it will be a little more stable than how I manage active users per day. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. This number start with one million and yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, again, this would be more like distributed. I would still say, even if it's US, mm -hmm. I would think of is that, you know, acceptable for uh, yeah you can have that app in distributed in nature so that Correct. Should, yeah. so from that like there is typically we want to think about what are our requirements in terms of a typical distributed system mm -hmm. um, so uh, if it's a photo sharing like a, in general public sharing app i'm thinking more from the other apps that i tend to use mm -hmm. more like eventual consistent uh, so is that something we sh we can go with even in this one? So what do you think? Which so when you say yeah, cap, so I I'm thinking more from that. If, sorry, sorry, I lost you there. No, no. What uh, so cap means that you consistent yeah. availability and partition partition tolerant. tolerant. So I'm thinking that uh, in an app like this, if somebody mm -hmm. let's say post a picture or they post a comment in general. Uh, usually it's okay if it doesn't show up right away. Like if they refresh it and it shows up, um, that's what I mean by eventual consistency that eventually data, they no data will be lost. Like once it's committed, but there might be a slight, you know, uh, delay or sub second or something. Yeah, I think that is fine. All, uh, but I think all, uh, if you are maintaining availability, I'm okay with the eventual consistency. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking of prioritizing availability and partition tolerance over okay. consistency in this. Sure. Uh, yeah, it is not a mission critical uh, application. So if there is a delay, I think that should be okay. Yeah, I mean, um, sure. And, uh, it should be reliable. Yeah, like I want it to be reliable. Uh, sure. If I upload a picture and I get the confirmation, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, does this kind of look reasonable or is there something, can we start with this or? Yeah, uh, I think this is good to get started. Uh, okay. I would like to see uh, how your storage and other things would look like, how you handle it, but that could be done as part of the design. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, so one thing, uh, as we were noting down the features, one thing I like to um, uh, think about is the high level uh, design. And then, like you mentioned, storage, maybe we can move towards that. Mm -hmm. In terms of high level. In terms of high level, I'm thinking if I have like multiple users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like to split the functionality, like the core features, functional requirements as individual services. Mm -hmm. um, so I would have something like an upload, mm -hmm. um, download, mm -hmm. my... so 
Okay. So are you breaking your uploading, downloading to specific thing? Yeah, it's the reason I'm kind of thinking, we may merge them, but I'm thinking like the requirements will be different, right? Upload will be more like write heavy. Mm -hmm. Upload will be more like reading operations, right? Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of going in that direction, but uh, okay. uh, so that's that. And then, like you said, likes and comments can be later, but maybe we can have a new speed. Hmm. Okay. This isn't so when you say newsfeed, that would be like uh, the latest events which I. Yeah, I was going to ask. Like, is it more like uh, so every user will have certain you know friends or you know followers? Mm -hmm. So we, uh, I'm just borrowing ideas from the other apps we mm -hmm. use. But you can let me know if that's correct. So is it more like I'm pulling, let's say, top. Uh, 20 posts from across all my followers and showing that yes i think to get started that would be like this but there could be more rules which we okay. can introduce but yes okay to get started yeah we like some uh, my close followers i want right. to see latest activity latest activity yeah and this can be more like I'm thinking in terms of like, these will be my three sort of microservices. Mm -hmm. So I can go into depth, uh, whichever way we want. Sure. Okay. So, um, so this is like user uploading, they'll be consuming this service and new speed will be like mm -hmm. pushing. Um, so now on the server side, there will be of course, like we'll have database to store mm -hmm. content and when we think of download, I like to also think about something like a metadata. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, I don't know if we want to support this here. Uh, uh, do we also, I mean, if we are using download, then we also possibly want to have something like a view functionality, right? Um, like just view pictures may not be necessarily download or is it not needed for this? Yes, uh, so are you talking about uh that it could be like a placeholder or something no, so like if i log into instagram right and mm -hmm. I, I think i'm getting uh, i'm getting into a little more into new speed uh, that mm -hmm. might be overlapping with it but when i see new speed of my friends uh, mm -hmm. i might see oh they uploaded a picture right mm -hmm. just so in a way the picture is downloaded from server but i'm not downloading it on my client right i'm just viewing the picture there does that make sense? So what is the difference between uh, when you are seeing the picture on your device and it is not downloaded? Yeah, download, I mean, I was thinking uh, I can further go ahead and download the picture on my laptop, for example. But once the image is there on your device as you have rendered it. Yeah, so I mean, it will be more like a network call. Uh, that might be different. Okay, so I think then in that case, we can think of, okay, download from server. So that's no. so seems like uh, there could be uh, things which can be done different. So there could be things which you just see, which are just thumbnails. Oh, okay. That that is another perspective. Sure. And yeah. when you actually open it, yeah, or save it on your local, that would be a different scenario. But yeah, just want to see how you will. Use. Yeah, I was actually uh, usually when I tend to think of these services. I usually uh, tend to lean towards having a separate metadata and the okay. actual content. Um, mm -hmm. And that is where I was getting into that zone about, you know, storing high level information, but mm -hmm. I think that would also suffice here. So, okay. um, so let me know if, if that, this direction is okay, but I'm thinking in terms of database, we are talking about the content, which is photos and videos, mm -hmm. could be user profiles, right? Um, and then if we are considering news feed, there will be information about who is following whom and who are the friends of, you know, my friend list. So I'm thinking of a couple of ways I can model this in a database scenario. But before that, uh, like, is that okay if I talk about yeah. So let's see, let's see your data model. How it okay. Will... So, um, yeah, so there are, so as I said, upload will be more like write heavy. Mm -hmm. Load will be read heavy. So mm -hmm. uh, I can 
Um, one thing is, and I'm just creating a distributed app. So mm -hmm. as I create the replicated replications, right? Replicated mm -hmm. versions, mm -hmm. I can take into account this uh, ratio, write versus read. Mm -hmm. and I can actually have uh, these different, uh, you know, copies of my database. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, some can be more like, so they will, they might be like master slave configuration. So one or two databases, depending on my workload, um, mm -hmm. I can have it as a primary. So that is like my primary where I'm getting like writes and reads and there can be others which can be um, like the supporting ones, like the secondary ones. And if, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I want to- Sorry, I just lost you. Like which, uh, what you are trying to solve here? Yeah, so I'm trying to uh, address the idea of write versus read uh, operations. So write versus read of what? If I'm thinking of download operation, that is like I'm reading something, right? And let's say another user, user one, is uploading some data, and then user two is trying to download something. So I might not hit the same primary database. I might just. Um, so I'm thinking that I might not hit my primary database all the time, right? So um, what is your, like, what is in your primary data? Is it like your storage or like? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So let me step back there. I was going. I would like to see what is your metadata. Okay. Like, and right now, I think uh, you told you have registered user of 1 million. I don't know how yeah, yeah, yeah. you want so, to. Okay. Go. So okay. in terms of content, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is, uh, let me write it here. So in terms of data model or stuff, so let uh, I want to store my registered users. Mm -hmm. um, and this can be like uh, user ID and their other profile information. Right? Mm -hmm. And there can be uh, the content, which is more like pictures. Mm -hmm. And I can even separate them and there will be metadata for that, right? Uh, mm -hmm. ID or path or size and so on. And there will be also information about uh, like which picture belongs to whom, right? Who uploaded mm -hmm. it, who owns the picture. So there will be more like users and um, uh, image. Uh, finding. I, I need to store this relation as well. And yeah. other in but that cannot be in the uh, in picture images only. Uh, that can be, but I think let me uh, maybe I think I'll talk about the data model next. Right now, I'm thinking about the what data I need to store. Like you're talking about the entities you need. Uh, I mean entities or relationships. I'm just trying to put together everything, and then I can try to see how I connect them. Okay. Um, so. So this is other information I want to store. And then also my friends list or followers list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and now coming to data model. Um, so I'm thinking there are different ways I can do this. Uh, registered users, like the moment I wrote this, I'm thinking of a graph database. Okay. Right. Um, and information like one way to model this first one is simple relational model. I'm sorry, I'm mixing up the. If you want, you can remove the upper thing, okay. functional requirements or something. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd the wrong. In terms of data models, uh, the few ideas I'm getting. So in terms of friends, followers, think of a graph database, mm -hmm. uh, which is very natural thing for modeling connections. Mm -hmm. For the first one, the basic idea can be a relational model mm -hmm. where I have a user's table. Mm -hmm. And I have a let's say a pictures table. Mm -hmm. this, let's say. Um, now coming to the point of how I store 
um, even even before that, even before getting into number three, uh, users and images. Mm -hmm. uh, there can be a couple of ways depending mm -hmm. on how the schema is going to, if the schema mm -hmm. is relatively stable or if it's going to evolve. For example, for image, I can store information like ID or path, mm -hmm. and later I might want to add, let's say, tags or mm -hmm. uh, In that case, I'm changing the structure, right, at a later point. Um, so I'm thinking if, if I go that route, if we have to keep that point in mind, then a key value store is more flexible than a relational model where you can easily change schemas. Um, Why the schema will change? No, so like I said, as of now, we are only, let's say, considering these three factors, right? Okay. Later, as the application grows, and mm -hmm. if we want to expand our application, let's say we also want to support tags on pictures. Okay. Right? So my metadata, that information that I'm storing about my images, it's changing, right? I'm adding more information that I want to store. <laughs> so I'm thinking like relational databases, they do support schema evolution, but mm -hmm. in general, uh, NoSQL data stores are more like schema flexible. Uh, uh, not to say that one cannot do this, but uh, I'm in terms of trade-offs, I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, I th think, uh, okay, let's move ahead. I want to see other uh, end. Okay. The other thing is, so that's one about relational versus um, key that, um, no SQL. Um, the other point is about coming to users and image connection. Mm -hmm. If I go with relational model, I can have this, um, there are multiple ways to do it in relational. I mm -hmm. the users uh, image table, mm -hmm. where I have foreign keys for user ID and image ID. Mm -hmm which are coming from my base tables mm -hmm. these months. And uh, then, so that's one idea. The other idea is that, like you were saying, so one user can have multiple pictures. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is a one to many relationship. Yeah. I can have um, that information also stored in uh, here, like in the pictures table, with the user ID as the foreign key. Where is your pictures table? This one, right? Images. Okay, this images one. table. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, and then where is your videos? Yeah, I should add that. So I sh Why is this? I think you can edit. So I okay. I, I I will assume that your image table will have both images and videos data. Uh, yeah, I think I can just call. What? Okay, I can't edit it. It's weird. It's so, okay. It's okay. Let's uh, move. Yeah. Basically, I'll have something like post table uh, or like content, which can be images as well as videos. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and the metadata may need to be adapted about, you know, the quality or the resolution and all that. Um, so that's that. And uh, I was talking about this relation between. Uh, can I clear this? Um, so other way to model this user's image is that I can put user ID in my mm -hmm. um, pictures, you know, this content table, and that will be a foreign key to my users. Mm -hmm. um, so that is another way if we go the relational route. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing I'm thinking is Anytime we have an application like the sharing app, you know, all these public sites, um, uh, we also have to, um, like OLAP versus OLTP, you know, mm -hmm. the kind of models that we have for these two applications are slightly different. So mm -hmm. by OLAP, I mean, like, I want some aggregations. Like, uh, when, when I get a new, uh, when I see a picture or thumbnail, of a friend's picture, mm -hmm. uh, it also shows, for example, I know you said we don't want to go into likes, but as an example, so mm -hmm. I can say, let's say 1,000 likes on the picture. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's an aggregated number. Mm -hmm. so I think if we, that is another way if we want to think about that feature, then I need to also look at having some maybe tables which store denormalized data so that I can quickly run my query against it. 
and I can get that, you know, count or sum or whatever. Uh, okay, uh, we can come back to that. But right now, I want to see how your thumbnails and the actual content will be stored. Right. So, um, when you say, so do we want to go, is it okay if we go with relational then? Yeah, um, uh, yeah I think this data is fine with relational. Uh, okay. If needed, we can switch yeah. between relational or NoSQL. But okay. how thumbnails, videos, actual content would be stored and look like? So when you say how will it be stored, are we talking, so like we talked about metadata, but mm -hmm. are we also talking about, like I'm thinking of more database features, like how I'll, you know, share a data or partition in terms of load, but is, I don't know if I'm going totally off the direction, but. No, uh, yeah, th uh, that is one thing which we can circle back. Mm -hmm. Right now I want to see how you would, storing your actual data and then from there I would like to see how your components will start talking it to each other. Okay. Um, so right now I don't see like where is it. So if I, so basically uh, if I upload a file, what uh -huh. will, oh, okay, okay. will That kind of workflow. Okay. Yes. So let's start talking about workflow and where the things now actually start uh, working out. Right, right. Um, okay, so let's, that means we want to, let's say, focus on upload functionality. Upload, before upload, I didn't see like how, where your images, actually, are you storing the images and videos in your database? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. How you would store that? Oh, well, so there can be, okay. Uh, there can be, if I go relational model, I can always, like a relational database, I can always so, store them as like blob or, you know. Blob, okay. I didn't but, see. But also yeah. in terms of HDFS, like if we go that route. I can... Okay, so that is interesting, HDFS, so how you will link them. So that part, so, so that is something I couldn't see in your... Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't going, I was, wasn't was thinking about the, like there can be HDFS or, you know, all these S3, Amazon S3. Okay. There can be all those storage. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes back to that which kind of underlying approach I want to use. If I'm using relational. So right like, now you told me three approaches. One yeah. is directly store as a blob in the yeah. data. Second, yeah. you told me HDFS, like, and third, you told me S3. Right. So I just want to see which one you want to pick up and why. Uh, right. Um, so let's see. If I go with, uh, I'm thinking of trade-offs, right, in each of them. Um, mm -hmm. Relational, I can, I mean, I can de definitely uh, tie it easily. I can fit it quite easily in my data model because I have my users table you know, and if I have images also stored as blob, mm -hmm. um, but if that's... Can you also store video as a blob there? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, maybe we need another. I'm pretty sure like relational should support some way, but I don't... Uh, it could be, I think it could store as a base 64. Yeah. Blob, but... Uh, Actually, you know, as you're saying, you I'm thinking... Maybe. Sorry. Um, my, my question was, do you actually want to store in the database or you just uh, want some external source? Yeah, here? that's that's a good point. Actually, I can store it in some external like HDFS or some other, you know, like file mm -hmm. system, which is very mm -hmm. easy to just dump data. And I can possibly store the path to that in my relational database. Okay. Like the path I'm saying here. So okay. that might be a good idea, actually. So, so now your storage would be like HDFS or you mentioned yeah. S3. Okay, yeah. okay. The sounds good to me for now. Let's okay. proceed further. Yeah, so if I have like... So, so how your uh, high level diagram will look like now? Right, right. Um, and this is like just secondary copies. So right now, I, uh, let's say everything is primary. Uh, just make it simple, okay. and we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Um, so, so that takes care, let's say if I have HDFS storage. Okay. Right. And I'm storing the, in my primary database, I'm kind of, um, uh, let me think. Uh, so this thing, when I say upload, so uh, right now I, we have seen you have Mac, so you have your Mac data. So high level, I I can see you have a user who can have upload, download, newsfeed, and Mac data and HDFS. So now next thing I would like to see how these components will start. Right, right. So I think I'm thinking that uh, again a little simply uh, simple version that when I say upload and mm -hmm. have a file to upload, it should first go to HDFS, right? And if that gets, um, you know, successfully, you know, uh, stored there, then I need to push that information to my relational database, which is in prime D. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking, should I do it directly from HDFS or should HDFS give an acknowledgement to my upload service and do it that way? Um, actually, it should possibly be this. Uh, this is one way I'm thinking. and. No, again, what is your primary? I, I, primary is like where your metadata meta data lives? No, no, no. Primary is where my all these tables, right? That I'm thinking. So, um, which is your metadata? Or metadata of your image? Okay, so when you see uh, primary, that means all your tables like friend, followers. Actually, yeah, actually, um, based on the design we are going with right now, mm -hmm. I don't think, I think metadata and primary will be essentially the, let me, let me just step back. Um, sure, sure. sure. Take HDFS in mind, but uh, now that we are having HDFS, mm -hmm. um, okay. I mean, I'm thinking probably primary and I don't, I may not need metadata separately because primary will also serve as metadata. Um, yeah, like what is it? Because right now I'm storing all the content in HDFS and my primary essentially can serve the role of metadata as well. Okay. Oh, I don't want this. So, okay, so your database would be having all your, uh, right now, all users. The, uh, users. Okay, sounds good. So yeah. when you upload request will come, what will it do? Uh, upload request, yeah. So when the user tries to upload, it goes to HDFS, uh -huh. and then if if it gets successfully stored there, mm -hmm. then uh, now this is another layer of microservice I need. Like mm -hmm. HDFS is a another storage mechanism than relational, mm -hmm. so I possibly need some some block. I possibly need some some interceptor here, you know, which kind of lets HDFS may be possible, like communicate with my relational, some API. Mm -hmm. If the data gets stored there, then that path of that, you know, image or video gets passed on to my primary database. But why? Why can't you first create an entry in metadata? No, and... because I don't want to create an entry. And what if, uh, uh -huh. what if it doesn't get stored in HDFS? But you told your system is uh, highly available and reliable. That is true. That is true. But okay, that's a good point. So I think I can, um, based on what you're saying, it makes sense. I can think of it more as a transaction, right? That if 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 I push it onto my metadata first, uh, like I'm looking at I'm looking at metadata plus HDFS as a transaction unit. So they have to be atomic, right? Okay. So, and I mean, either way, right? If I go HDFS first or metadata first, it should be fine as long as both occur. So how you will know like something is successful? Right, that's what I'm thinking that if I, let's say go uh, HDFS route first, then I upload my data on HDFS and mm -hmm. HDFS pushes on the URL of that uh, content to primary database and that one stores the data in my table right and but, that sends an acknowledgement to the user uh, that it's done but meanwhile 
what, so let's say, so see, it seems like you will uh, still have the metadata somewhere in some transit memory. And if that memory is gone, your metadata is lost. No, so that will be more like, that is more like getting into the recovery protocols, right? So you're right, like there will be memory, you know, if I go with relational, that itself, I'm thinking that that will have its own, like this buffer pool and how I commit data to my, you know, write ahead logs and all that mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, so all those things have to be like, they are an entity in themselves. I'm just trying to abstract them in primary database, but uh, okay, yeah. uh, for now I'm okay, I'm fine. But uh, okay. I thought there could be more things can be done around that. Oh, is it okay? So, or I was thinking like when you store in your primary, you just mark that as inactive, and when your storage is done successfully, you will mark that metadata as active. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. And then there should some there should be some retry mechanism if something fails, then. Uh, so, but so from upload to primary to HDFS, do you want like that should be like a synchronous? It should it would be a synchronous uh, way of doing things. Yeah, that's a good point actually. So uh, let's see. Uh, so with synchronous, I would have to wait. The user would have to wait for the acknowledgement, and asynchronous it can happen like a sort of a queuing mechanism or something. Uh, so user don't need kind of acknowledgement. So user uploaded and later we can send a notification or something. So. Okay. Okay. If that's the case, then sure. So, uh, I think we had the, in the start, like it could be eventual consistent. So that means like you, is it, is it expected that the user would not see immediately and can see in few seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, if that, sure. Okay, I, I wasn't thinking on that, on those lines, but yeah, if that's something we want to go, then maybe we can think of like a, something like a queuing mechanism. Um, um, so users tries to upload and they get pushed on to, you know, like here, I'm thinking we can have some, com or maybe even here actually, um, <laughs> we can have some sort of a queue structure where okay. requests are pushed and, um, yeah, and actually that's a good point. I'm thinking like uh, uh, the point you mentioned about marking it in the primary database, like active and, you know, mm -hmm. active, that might even tie this uh, back to this queuing mechanism because if I'm queuing my request, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be all, I can do it in parallel also, right? I push, mm -hmm. it, I push the metadata to my primary uh, mm -hmm. and mark it as, like inactive, let's say 20 requests got pushed and mm -hmm. I'm as inactive and in parallel, I'm trying to upload it to HDFS. And as that is done, then it gets propagated to primary and their, their status is changed to active. Okay. 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 So, okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, now some kind of scaling in terms of like now I have a lot of upload and download, how you will handle that? Right. Um, so upload and download. So one way of scaling is, um, is this the master step configuration. So I know that the downloads are more like read heavy. Mm -hmm. so I can have these, let's say 10 replicas as an example. Uh, let's say I have 10 replicas of my database and mm -hmm. two are kind of handling or not two, I mean, uh, let's say six are handling writes as well as reads and four are primarily serving reads. So, but before going to data, so like you're telling like adding more uh, primary and secondary nodes, right? Yeah. W would that be reasonable here? Like it could be costly for me to add a lot of, uh, can sure, I sure. run without yeah. doing database side or some other way of doing, or actually, so first thing is, do I actually need to scale my database? Can I have something like caching or other things? Oh, that's that's true. Actually, for downloading, I can definitely have caching, right? Because uh -huh. multiple, like, uh, I don't know if uh, I'm jumping here, but I'm thinking of followers idea, right? When I have, let's say, multiple followers all trying to download the same image, uh, caching layer, 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, to fasten that up and to save the bandwidth. Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's one. And also like in terms of similarly uploading, uh, probably uh, things like partitioning data or sharding data can also help. Um, but already you told uh, you have something like asynchronous. So although it could be slow, but it would happen. No, it would happen. But like even I'm so I'm thinking even if it ha like even if there is a de delay is OK, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we don't want to hit the same like the uh, copy of the database, right? If there mm -hmm. are like 100K users active, we mm -hmm. don't have one or two copies of the database hit, um, you know, at the same time. Okay, so, okay, so that is interesting. Let's talk about that. Uh, so you're telling uh, uh, some... So, so I'm thinking like if I split the my database, for example, uh, where okay. I'm putting these users and content, if I split it in terms of, there are a couple of ways I can do it. One is user, user, right? If I have all the photos of a user. Okay, so first, why we are splitting? What is it? Why we are splitting? Uh, so, coming back to this idea of followers and friends list, right? Uh -huh. If I have, um, uh, I can maintain different pools, categories of users, right? Mm -hmm. Can be like celebrities, some can be like having X number of followers, or there can be another category more than X, like that. And their their download um, ratio would be different, right? Download or up, even upload, actually. So how many users you you don't? We are right now having hundred k active users. So because right. we are going to split. Yeah. So I'm thinking along the lines that if I have let's say twenty k celebrities, right? The mm -hmm. content that they upload um, on this service on this mm -hmm. page, right that will be downloaded much many more times compared to an average user. That you're caching, right? Sure, sure. But but it will also depend on my upload, right? Because where is my data stored? Caching will help to fasten it. But when mm -hmm. I'm my data for the first time, right? Okay. Am I hitting so, one database or am I hitting? So how your split will look like? Let's see uh, if you want to write something, draw. <laughs> helpful for me to I mean this might evolve but one idea is but as I'm saying it I'm I'm also seeing the cons of using this approach maybe I should uh -huh. do it differently but if I split based on user ID right then there can be skew right uh, coming back to the same point of the distribution uh, mm -hmm. content distribution or celebrities right Mm -hmm. One, if I store in terms of, if I try to say that, okay, this this shard has all the photos or videos of, let's say, these 10 users, mm -hmm. right? one user, whatever, um, mm -hmm. terms of collisions and hashing, uh, but that can totally skew my workload. So basically, you are now bringing partition based on the users. Like yeah. Users in one... Right. Uh, partition, other set of users in other partition. Correct, correct. And uh, where the photos will live? Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like when I partition by user ID. Everything of the that user would be in one node. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, uh, one user content can be such that it may not even uh, be possible to store it in one database. In that case, we might have to have multi-level sharding. Okay. But I mean, this Q thing is uh, a little like, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of partitioning because it can create an imbalance. So the other way is if I split by photo ID or content ID. Why you are splitting by photo ID? So just to have a uniform distribution, right? If I have a total of, for example, 1 million pictures, right? And I don't care about the users. Uh, let's say I have 1 million pictures in my storage mm -hmm. um, and I want to have a uniform distribution of the data on my databases, 
then rather than going by partitioning by user id if i split by content id right like mm -hmm. each id let's say have a unique i mean each content will have a unique id and mm -hmm. i just split it you know like uh, 100k on each server that will be relatively uniform compared to user id partition why user id was not uniform i can still have anybody who starts name with no, no. So the way I'm thinking is user ID. Uh, maybe I wasn't clear here. My idea is store all content. Mm -hmm. uh, a set of users, mm -hmm. considering collisions and those, um, in um, in one database. Like, uh, are you are you uh, are you considering it could become like a hotspot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what I mean. Okay. So you, so you mean that uh, some particular user can become really active, like a celebrity? Yeah, and that user will store, let's say, upload uh, ratio is much higher than that's where I was thinking of this queue or hotspot. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, okay, let's talk, uh, let's quickly see about your. So, you you are telling you want to sh uh, partition by content ID or photo ID. Yeah. Okay. That okay, so. means that I am not putting like I'm not going by this user ID approach. So, if I have whatever number of amount of data I have, if I just kind of equally distribute um, amongst the servers I have, then. Um, that can help at least with this problem. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of trade-offs on that. Uh, is there something I should be more? Uh, I mean, there can always be the stuff uh, that some content is downloaded more than others. So still there, there is a possibility of imbalance. Mm -hmm. or, uh, maybe we can think of creating replicas or load balances around that. But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's say like uh, you're splitting with content ID. So how it will look like? Um, yeah. So yeah. essentially I'm saying uh, all the let's say pictures with in the range, uh, let's say uh, ID uh, mm -hmm. 100 will reside on server one mm -hmm. and then pictures with uh, in the range uh, ID greater than 100 or 1000 server two and so on. <laughs> this is how I'm thinking. Uh, I mean, of course, I have to make it uniform, right? Like two hundred. Okay. Uh that's fine. Let's talk about the news feed. Okay. Uh, can I take this out? Uh, yeah, you can move that around anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, news feed. Yeah. I can't see any uh, much about. Uh, we don't have much time right now, but if you just want to touch upon. Yeah. It. So news feed. One few ideas that are coming to mind is so when I log in, I have mm -hmm. a lot of friends and of you know, let's say people who are following me or whom I am following. So idea is, uh, uh, let me know which way we want to go. So the first question is mode uh, of uh, fetching data, right? Mm -hmm. It can be push or pull. Um, and in terms of the popularity of users, I can even define a hybrid scheme that if it's a celebrity, then do a pull model versus push. Um, what is this push pull hybrid? So push is more like when I log in, right? Then all then this uh, no, I mean the popular post, right? Whatever my approach is, the mm -hmm. random stuff I have, um, that data gets kind of pushed automatically. Like I already get the notifications, and it's not like. Uh, and pull model is more like, so it's it's happening behind the scenes. It's not something that user may notice. It's not like I have to trigger a you know button or something, but mm -hmm. more like when does the server gets hit 
uh, or when does the request goes to the server for pulling all this data, right? So mm -hmm. instead of, for example, push model, I can think of maintaining some queue, right? Which is holding all this information that mm -hmm. is thrown at me when I log in, right? Okay. And full model is more like um, when I log in at that time, there is a request that goes to the server and asks for all the, you know, top K posts. Okay. Right. Um, and hybrid, I'm thinking if it's a celebrity, right. In that case, uh, uh, the, the news feed will be much more heavy. So I can define a rule which says that for a, you know, user with these many followers follow one model versus other. Um, so, so basically, it looks like to me, pushes their uh, uh, server will push things. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. And the server has uh, some new content, and pull is where client would always constantly yes. pulling yes. for new content from the server. And hybrid right. would be like mix of them, and uh, you don't like push you why you're going between them because uh, uh, if there is a yeah, uh, like the, uh, yeah, like the, if there is a more popular user, right? If I let's say you know some celebrity posts something, mm -hmm. then if I follow a um, let's see, if I follow a pull model in that case, then mm -hmm. I'm saying that. And if, you know, 100 user, like not 100, I mean, if it, I'm talking about celebrity, if let's say um, 100K users are logged in mm -hmm. and one celebrity which posted something and all those 100K users are hitting the server at the same time mm -hmm. to pull the content mm -hmm. and following that celebrity. So, so, so where is the problem? That will be a problem, right? Where, where people are uh, polling the server? Uh, yeah, where they're polling. Because if I do a push model, right, then mm -hmm. if I maintain the queues, right, if I have a queue uh, where already when the celebrity posts, the queue is filled with that data. And, well, I'm, I'm getting a little uh, confused. Uh, is it like when the user is... Uh, so, so I'm thinking more like a celebrity, and if we do a push model for them, like we have to push for if I so let's say if I'm a celebrity and hundred people are following me, and if I do a push, then I have to push for hundred people. Yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm I'm the reason I'm getting a little lost is that we can define these semantics uh, at two stages. One yeah. is when the data is getting, uh, you know like uh, getting getting fetched from the server right mm -hmm. whether we go with push or pull there and other is at the client side right when i'm pulling data or like fetching data uh, on my side um i'm thinking like maybe those two stages and how i work through them may be a little different but okay sounds fair and, and um, yeah. Okay. Uh, any other thing you want to touch upon? Even? Yeah, I was thinking like in terms of news feed uh, to maintain this list of who's following whom, a mm -hmm. database can help. Um, and the other thing I had in mind was about, I mean, ideally this news feed that I, you know, put in a box here, this is more like a high level microservice. But mm -hmm. I can split it up in terms of, like you said, top, you know, K posts of all my, you know, people I'm following. So mm -hmm. I possibly have some sort of ranking algorithm or sorting algorithm to kind of, you know, give me that top 20 posts. Okay. Sounds good then. Okay. I think we are almost at the end. And I'm not sure if I can of touch through um, all the points, but... but I think that's fine. Uh, I think okay. uh, 
we covered all most all the components so that is i think good for enough so okay thank you dp okay thanks for doing this design session yeah okay cool i think officially we are done with that so now we can open the floor for the audience to chime in chat or uh, share their suggestions or feedback or even dp if you want to share something before anybody it will also work um yeah i mean i think i'm i'm going to wait for the feedback it's like for me right now i'm still in the question mode <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so let's um, yeah hmm. i would like to hear more about the bottling in the system i'm sorry uh, for like i missed that what bottle so is there any bottle in in the system or do you want to optimize bottle neck in the systems oh bottle necks uh one thing i could think of was when asim was mentioning about news feed like uh, uh you know maybe if i can sort of some pre generate you know like caching idea uh, that he pointed me to or is there some way i can sort of maybe uh you know based on this push pull idea if i can have some queue structure where i can pre generate the keep collecting the news feed and then just uh, do that like push it to the user when it's ready um, i don't know if you are talking about a specific component of yeah but i i think anybody can uh, chime in now and yeah. say they, he or she thinks what could be the bottleneck yeah anybody wants to talk about what will be the bottleneck here uh, yeah hi so i think the immediate need can be a bottleneck in this case sorry uh, i think your voice was breaking yeah so am i audible now yeah you are audible it's uh, like uh... okay so thanks uh, so one point i'm thinking of right now here is that immediate read of uh, a photo image or a video can be a photo mm -hmm. you said reads right like you mean like the news feed or the download part uh, right so dp uh, i'm ask, i'm on only a particular flow not read it's uh, i'm talking about this immediate read I'm... I think uh, he is talking about really uh, uh, viewing the videos in a news feed. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. And the, image, and the image immediate read. So I mean, I have a, something on my mind uh, in the for this use case. So I would like to share that. So sure. can we not have something like a right through cache when we are uploading, a, let's say, a user profile image or uh, you know some a video? So can we not uh, write it uh, into the cache as well at the same time? to serve the immediate read oh i see i see what you're saying okay um sure yeah i uh, correct me if i'm wrong so but if i got your idea right so you're saying that when we upload stuff then at the once it's uploaded we can also push it to the cache layer so that it can be served you know quickly right right so reads can be served and uh, at the we can send an acknowledgement to the user that your image or the video has been uploaded successfully and uh, subsequently we can uh, introduce a queue system where we'll uh, introduce that you know maybe the file to the queue and then later on uh, submit it uh, in uh, basically persist it in the database like as just as maybe as three object store yes yes that's a good idea actually yeah so i think uh... what possibly is saying is also push it here like to the caching layer so that when once the user gets acknowledgement i mean at the as the part of that it also gets passed to caching and then it can be downloaded yeah. it again depends on the task I, i think the caching that you're talking about uh, in your diagram is more about a database caching and uh, what we are bringing up now as a video or image content uh is like cdn caching like what netflix oh. kind of service does because that's the oh. content based caching right yeah yeah okay yeah. right right so that's exactly what my point was okay okay but the idea was like in general um, yeah sorry it's like really bad 
<laughs> I don't know if uh, CDN would suffice here, right? Because CDN is usually like uh, here we are talking about how fast we can write and respond to the user. I think that's what the suggestion was like. How do we quickly say like, okay, if somebody is uploading the data, how do I quickly respond back to them uh, to say that upload is successful or upload is proceeding or not? I think, can... So I think there are multiple ideas of caching that we are, you know, uh, having, I mean, in terms of discussion. So uh, yeah, the, my idea here was more like serving the download request if the same request comes again. But I think there are some good ideas that, uh, yeah. 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 So the so second uh, thing, storing in the cache first could also take a hit. If I have a uh, hundred K people uploading something, my cache could go for a toss. Uh, I think, I think generally this is, uh, rights will uh, operate in its own sweet time, right? In generally this, the application is more meant to be about reads and how you distribute data for reads, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the uh, primary focus would be how you serve the follower uh, when you upload your content, how uh, how they see render the content properly. So mm -hmm. when you upload an image, it, there is no SLA that okay the image should sh show up in uh, other uh, portals immediately. So the upload can take its own sweet time and respond to the user. Uh, but I think it is more about the other side, which we have more bottlenecks. Uh, mm -hmm. So one thing that I see in that piece is when we, when we say content ID based partitioning, uh, let's say you, you do this based on content ID based partitioning. When you do a read uh, of a specific uh, celebrity, yeah. Okay, you open a page of a specific celebrity, you will be fetching almost every single server that you have. You will be, you, one request will need to go through hundred different servers that you're storing your content at. Won't that be a bottleneck? Because you are hitting, constantly hitting almost every single server uh, so, for every single so uh, user. I think she brought the caching there. So like 80, 20 rule. So where we know like, uh, of the celebrity data could be hit more, we'll cache that first. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, I think I, there is a little different. I think uh, one point I seen there was even before caching, right? So mm -hmm. caching, definitely there are about 80, 20 rule that you mentioned, like uh, most of the you know content that is asked for comes from the 20%. Uh -huh. That is there, but the other point I'm hearing is about this partition idea that I took about content ID. So if I do content ID, then my, uh, let's say a celebrity made, you know, as an example, like hundred posts and they are split across 10 different servers. Mm -hmm. Isn't it bet so I was thinking that that would be a better design because even though let's say 10 servers are hit as compared to one or two servers being hit, right? I can always yeah. use concurrency and uh, not concurrency. I mean, parallelism uh, mm -hmm. to maximize. Uh, no, when you are uploading, why it is only for uh, no, no, it's about like, download. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. the question, I'm sorry, correct me if uh, whosoever asked uh, the question. Uh, so, so one thing is uh, when you say that, uh, so what happens with these systems is as they grow, you move your partitions. Uh, you yeah. split your partitions and move, right? right? So one of the examples that we can take is Spotify was having the similar issues where they cannot grow their Cassandra clusters further. So they mm -hmm. have to create new clusters in order to address their partitioning. So oh. the, those kind of bottlenecks will come when you try to move your data uh, between uh, the existing cluster to a new shard. So that is where you, you will fall into that trap of how to move your data to a new partition when you do the content ID based partition. Yeah, that's true. So I think it should be based on content ID plus timestamp. So generally all these systems don't uh, have a requirement where you have to pull all the content. It's always like a time series 
give me top end and kind of a pagination or a lazy loading so this uh, i think partitioning should be based on like content id or even the con uh, content id should be generated based on the time id then you can uh, distribute things into different partitions that can be another level of yeah okay yeah i think so, i'll yeah. that idea here because uh, we, so, we, you want to look at the top uh, list right it's not like every content you want to get it to the user so still not clear to me that how that partitioning based on the content id will solve the problem in case of celebrity so in case of celebrity so we the the so the concern was that it concern was that it will hit the single server right right, right. but now if based on the the if we partition based on the content id so to fetch the data we will have to hit all the server correct so hitting all the servers versus uh one server or two servers Oh, right. but but the traffic uh, i mean we uh, there is a more traffic now we are hitting all Definitely. the server at the equal rate right that is true so I that know. is where i'm thinking of you're right i mean it's not like a perfect solution uh, but i'm thinking it's more of a trade off between what kind of resources you have if you have more like network you know bandwidth if you can uh, play with that more compared to your database traffic right or can you afford a little higher hit rate on database but you can't have a lot of you know network traffic then in what in that case what you're saying totally makes sense <laughs> don't want to have you know that so in instagram there's an uh, one article of based on this one itself i mean the database queue and how they are handling it okay. so basically in the id itself they try to have a uh, the shard id the shard id is a virtual concept they can move shard from machine to machine and when they find as it is a cell when they when they find a particular member as a celebrity or something like that they mm -hmm. move uh, uh, they, they move that shard to a different uh, uh, machine together oh, oh okay and they maintain all the shards like in some metadata or something how do they know like, which shard what are the available shards and all so basically they have uh, took as a uh, some uh, some 20 bit or something like that but uh, uh, i mean uh, they have availed only one uh, some one k shards only in the so basically they have a 64 bit integer right uh, 64 bit uh, Uh, id i think so and uh, they have allowed only some i mean a few bits to the shard id and few bits to the type of the uh, data it is and uh, the other will be the user id or something like that mm -hmm. okay that is somewhere where you are pointing to that if we need to add more and how do we adapt to that how you are going to handle redundancy redundancy um i mean one one thing is it comes to data model right um where if i have like this normalization idea and all that um are you talking about that or the other other area where i see redundancy is where you have replication so of course like that and let's say let's say somebody posted the same picture 1000 times like one picture is being posted 1000 times a million times like that is the redundancy like right so that is so that can also take in my view uh, one thing is that also depends right let's say there is a some picture like you said and if there are 10 users who are posting the same picture right that is still depending on the application in general it can be supported but then my relational model for example if i'm going with that the primary key will be user id and picture id right even though the picture is same but the owner of that picture is different in those 10 cases because it's uploaded by 10 different people 
and uh, i think uh, we can even go further in that while uploading we can do something like a hashing based uh, thing and see if we the same picture is getting uploaded by multiple oh, users but it also comes back to the feature right application feature that if i have a general picture some let's say some quote is there and if people are it's getting popular and people are posting it if mm -hmm. we go with the uh, uh, checking the hash right that would i mean it depends on the application feature i might be okay to have same picture like on linkedin if i'm having the same picture circulating and it's posted by 100 people that mm -hmm. could be okay but would you store uh, but it? yeah storage cost will increase right yeah. so no, but we do support that right even no no, no. we do support but what oh. normally do is like uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they don't duplicate store so Just i see. like how many users are uh, uploaded this they'll have a separate reference for that and uh, only if i see what you're saying yeah okay in terms of storage and maintaining it behind the scenes yes yes so okay. if it's the same copy it's uh, good to maintain only one right so well it depends again right like yeah. one user deleted a picture from the account i don't want it to only you delete that reference from yeah, the yeah, yeah. Okay. correct yeah so uh, dp can we talk a little bit more about that hdfs part so when you write uh, write your uh, image to the HDFS and then write the HDFS path to the primary or whatever the database yeah. it is, how are we uh, organizing the HDFS? Will there be a one picture per file or are you gonna create a block of- Oh, that's a good point. Path? Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Like I should have taken account the size of the file, right? I might split it up. Uh, in terms of you know this upload service, it might not just send the whole file to HDFS in one shot. So similar to last time, so I can have something like a chunk service, which splits my file depending on if I'm supporting like big files, I can support some sort of chunk service which splits my file and then you know stores it in like you know. Um, snippets and sort of date uh, I, I could not get that point where like HDFS would be doing that on its own right so as you upload uh, the master would be splitting up the files into smaller chunk and keeping it no, into the I'm different I'm talking order. in more terms of like pushing the file to HDFS right HDFS will split it in terms of storage but mm -hmm. the client if I want to upload a file which is let's say one gig or some large size mm -hmm. Do I want to send it in one shot as one gig or should I break it up and maybe send it? But if it's an image, how will you put it back? So that would be a problem, right? Another ordering service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then? No, the images or videos, they will always be chunked, as I remember. I think uh, it, it's always, uh, you can put it back based on the bits or something. But usually the large files will always be chunked. Based on the binary that you will put them together again. Okay, okay. So there are mechanisms of doing that. But so so my question to... was, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the HDFS protocol itself takes care of uh, splitting it and, uh, I mean, uploading it to different data nodes. I mean, uh, if you are creating a new protocol itself, other than uh, uploading, I mean, you might have to take care of. But if it is HDFS or something, the protocol itself handles the splitting. Okay, and yeah. So and when you so say protocol, uh, and, so yeah. are you talking about a MapReduce algorithm on top of HDFS or will HDFS so itself do when that? You access, uh, when you do a HDFS put, you will access the internal data streams and resolve. That will be internally. Uh, so basically you will give the uh, file location to a local one and that will read the uh, so basically, the for, so basically, you need to give a write to a path HDFS path. So that uh, uh, HDFS name node actually checks whether that file, is, I mean, the path is available or not, something like that. And it gives you if it is a new file. It Correct. You, these are the data nodes that you can uh, write to. And uh, if the size is more, it can actually request the name node. Correct. For data not. So that is actually handled in the HDFS client itself. 
Okay. So another problem that I see is like if you do it in chunks, then again, like uh, like how are you going to put it back? Are you going to read individual files from HDFS and then combine them? And then where are you going to put it again? Yeah. So these are all uh, part of the HDFS client itself. If, I mean, if you want to read it uh, totally, you can read it as a block. That is also will be a stream. Yeah. Right. But we are externally chunking it. In the upload service, uh, I think uh, Uday, uh, he is mentioning that we externally do a chunking, one gig file divided into a two parts, 500 gig, 500 gig, and then upload to HDFS. So I, I think uh, the, there's a difference. So basically when you upload from a user's device, it might be different because uh, the internet speed might be low and you might not uh, have a uh, HDFS chunk size like 128 MB or something like that. Uh, if you are uploading from a user device, you might have you might upload some KBs or something like that. So you uh, when you receive all the parts, you assemble it and you put it back into a storage something again. Mm. Okay. So uh, this is fine about the videos. Um, so one question more would be like we'll be uploading images as well and images would be around four meg seven meg eight meg if you put billions of images into hdfs i think name node is gonna get overwhelmed because of yeah. these small files so that was my question was i wanted to understand like how should be should we be strategizing it like should we combine multiple images into a block of 128 meg or 64 oh, meg and yeah. then write the file or write it individually and then run a separate compaction or some bad job map reduce job Actually, that's a very good idea yeah. i mean i don't know much about it if i have to do this thing i i won't pick hdfs i will pick s3 and keep my life simple Otherwise, interview could take me into HDFS things and where I don't know the concept of MapReduce and replication name node, master server, and uh, just... Uh, yeah, in interview, you might not have to say all this. <laughs> I have a question here. Do you really need to mention HDFS or uh, just, just blank, like we are storing the object? Yeah, I mean, right. Yeah. The, the thing is, if I did not work in HDFS or S3, like he can take me to there, right? I'm, I'm just asking the question to the audience. Do you think like it is? Uh, at least we need in, my, in my opinion, I think if I just, like I mentioned HDFS because I just generally know you can dump data. But if I was, you know, in a real interview, I would just go ahead and make it clear that I have never worked in HDFS, but I'm just assuming there is some file storage service where I'll put it. But uh, I, I mean, I would be transparent about it that I don't know the inner working. Yeah, I mean, I think that that transparency I, we have to have. I, I, I thought like you are you are expert of HDFS because uh, you mentioned a couple of things and I, I no, I just thought about HDFS or S3 in general because they are different. They are much simpler storage mechanisms than relational or other. But that's pretty much, I haven't worked on any of them. So, but but coming to the point that somebody was mentioning before this about combining files and stuff, uh, I, am, I am actually taking those points more as general ideas. So those are really good ideas in terms of design to me that... I'm not like fixing my mind on HDFS ideas. It's more about general design strategies, thinking about batch commits and, you know, uh, stuff like that. That's, but that's a good point that we should not bring uh, any technology that yeah. we don't have uh, basic okay. knowledge about. So okay. uh, yeah. I think HDFS will be a too in-depth conversation if yeah. they go into that. And, and to your question, uh, I think my thought is you should at least know the basics of uh, these storage mechanisms because they, they are very rapid, I mean, very heavily used across uh, large applications when you talk about system design. So mm -hmm. knowing about an object store and HDFS is uh, certainly becoming a mandate. Uh, at a basic level at least. And the good part here is when we talk about any object storage like S3, we are not doing anything. We are using as a service. 
So only we need to know the properties of that service. Like how, uh, like at high level, I see only few things you should be knowing. Like does that support a multi a part upload, and how much is the maximum file can be stored, and then what will the how the cost will look like, and other things ca- will come out of box like. Uh, this disaster management it will auto you can set the replication on it will automatically regionalize and does other things so i think just if you know the properties of a service like what s3 supports that would be enough to get started because you are but not but azim uh, i'm sorry uh, but uh, we are right now writing a very uh, heavily used app right shouldn't mm-hmm. we be knowing if we are putting our main uh, meat of the application into a system, shouldn't we be knowing like how is it working? And I think it is expected uh, to go into the deeper. I mean, Amazon gives all this, but again, you might have a poor performance on it because you made some, you didn't have some critical knowledge about it. See, uh, again, any system we don't start with like, 1 billion requests. If you see this system also, we started gradually. And in my experience of building system, I have never built anything like which was perfect on the first day. We have to start with something and then based on our knowledge on pros and cons, and nobody in any team could be really super uh, perfect in any technology. And that's why we bring this agile thing. Like you build a system and if it doesn't work out well in your monitoring, then try to have a, another version of it where you can do things different. But at least if I have to start, I will first bank on the, right now, the technologies which are available like S3. So I don't have to do that myself. Yeah, other question? Other? Well, I have a, one more question about this discussion. I mean, HDFS. So, so see, like I have another reasoning to say, see, you only said HDFS about uh, DB, but you did not say any tool selection or your selection of application for any other other application server, cache mechanism, or any other place, right? So it doesn't. It is not rationalized. It, it, is, it is not rational. You can You could have uh, told that. Okay, I am going to talk about selection of tools and technologies which I'm going to choose in here and why I'm choosing, then it makes, but right now I was in impression that uh, you are expert of the HDFS and you were not able to answer Asim's questions. Mm. That is, that is what like, uh, I, I assume. If you, if you can, I, I think I will take out even S3 part because our, our, our main function is design and not the selection of tools. So you can articulate a little bit, but I was assuming you are HDFS expert and you did not answer a same question. So okay, maybe I didn't, uh, I, I'll take that as a, you know, very good feedback because uh, I, I know literally name node and data node is all I know, about <laughs> nothing beyond it. But uh, I am to relational database or graph database, but that's my... Yeah, I think so, so uh, one thing, what, what we are trying to understand here that, I mean, if someone go into the interview, so what we should actually yeah. tell, I'll talk about that. So so the lesson yeah. learned here is that if we, if we yeah. I mean, cannot handle the question, then we, we should not actually introduce that. Right, right. So it, it, it actually depends on the level at which you're applying. Generally, system designs are uh, more uh, customized to which position you are applying to as well. If you're talking about being an architect, you need to know most of the things. If you're talking about an L3, L2 kind of position, it's a completely different story. And the way uh, the, it, the discussion should be driven is what is your strength? Like you, if you are a backend uh, engineer, you know most of it, and you should drive towards how DP uh, drove the discussion towards database or a backend store kind of thing. Whereas if you are a mobile or UI engineer, you will focus more on how the data is uploaded and how the client app looks like, how it is distributed, how, how you shard or chunk the files before you upload it. So there are various angles to uh, the same system design. So that's the beauty of it, right? It will bring yeah. all your strengths out of the discussion that you're making 
and you should always focus on your strength and where you should go towards i mean you where you should take your interviewer towards so that you will be in that comfort zone of driving rather than he driving you towards his question yeah true and uh, i just want to add yeah. one more point uh, to vihan uh, uh, point that there is other way around using system design they uh, try to find out what level you are some companies also does like that even i know facebook they does yeah. so based on the system design uh, results they find the person would be like a senior engineer or a st2 mm. so i have to pitch in your position based upon the feedback yeah yeah and again it can change the monetary negotiations yeah yeah i was trying to steer uh, a scene towards graph database but that wasn't working out <laughs> so 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 asim uh, as into uh, uh, what's your feedback here yeah and let's uh, read a feedback so i think there is always like uh, my strengths and the uh, interview strengths my strengths was uh, mostly in terms of uh, application layer or services but i saw i see like uh, dp was going more towards database which was not my strength but okay i thought to stick to that and try to bring her back to services but the things which i see could have been done different here is uh, yeah. you see the read and write requests it could be part of non functional like how many uh, reads and writes are happening per second mm. based on that i would would like to see the uh, see i have seen applications doing the scaling of database at the end first they do try to scale on the services side like how you can add more services or asynchronous way of processing and then introducing caching and the at the end uh, Th systems goes towards scaling the backend. That is like my opinion, which I have seen. So I wa wanted to see more things how would have scaled initially on the services yeah. and caching and then database. I see. But again, that is my uh, strength. So that's how I see. But it could be the other person has a different strength, and 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 if there is a sober interviewer. he would he or she would like to see the person strength rather than trying to find their strength out of it that and again uh, yeah that's a good point and also it depends on like on the system right uh, assume like if the database is bottleneck then we want to make sure like we scale it over there and if the the services side is the bottleneck then you want to put more on that to see like how you scale out on all those things but here the service can also become a bottleneck where uh, uh, if you are that's what I, the numbers are missing in the start how many uh, read and writes per second happening yeah that's mm. right once yeah. we establish yeah yeah once we I establish those numbers initially probably right. we could focus like that right another thing that i thought was like you know uh, based on let's say 1 million users and uh, the number of fields that we had like how much of storage how much of data are we talking about uploading so those things those numbers we did not calculate we just jumped into you know creating so the, the uploads has just applied yeah so one question i have there is i do see that uh, capacity estimation stuff going on in a lot of blogs and uh, i was curious like if uh, you all can share your thoughts about when we do that uh, estimation right my way of thinking is how do that influence my design if i ask any question about okay this 1 million users these many requests this is what it comes out to be maybe i need let's say i don't know 1 terabyte of storage right uh when i get that when i calculate that number uh in my mind i'm thinking about what is it that is that how will i how will i pull that number uh into my design uh, workflow or stuff that is somewhere i kind of uh, find it a little challenging um or is there something that you can like can share yeah i think that's a good start right i think once we establish those numbers and if you are able to convert it into uh, yeah. or design that that's a good question actually so i mean yeah i, I I would like for example the chunk service last time when we discussed dropbox somebody mm -hmm. mentioned this point that depending on the file size if somebody says we are only going to support small files 
you probably don't need junk service. So that way, that kind of totally helps me. But yes. times okay. are, I tend to. Yeah. So my my experience with that. Uh, so we we support email archiving and we have a throughput of uh, 200 requests per second or something. Okay. So when you talk about those numbers, um, and if you relate it to your own experience, that's a plus, right? So that is where you're bringing in your own real time experience into it, which adds to that, and he he relates you to having that experience and exposure to that data. Hmm. Yes. If you don't have that experience, then probably you may need to have a little more reading on how uh, how many requests are generally supported on a database. I mean, what is the what yeah. is the throughput uh, that that you expect out of what your core area is? If you are talking about graph database, uh, how, how many how many requests does it usually support on a on a regular machine, and mm-hmm. how do you scale it, and how many users is it supporting? Like reading through. uh the facebook or uh, these kind yeah. of apps how they support users will give us more insights into that so so it is more about how exposed are you towards the scaling right that is the area i believe they are looking at mm. and uh, one other thing i want to mention uh, if i would be doing this i would also talk about uh, if user is uploading a 100 uh, one let's say 10 gb or 10 uh, or like 1 gb image something like that i, I would not be storing like 1 gb on my side or most of these uh, services like instagram facebook they store like a, a low resolution things because when they send it back they don't give you the original image or the video itself they encode into different versions and store in the way how they want because that is not uh, storage technology that is uh, maintaining your data but uh, the way how they they can they would like to store it that's like that's what is my understanding out of these systems if somebody has a different idea please chime in so asim uh, i think uh, we uh, right now design mostly the data layer in the coming session will we be uh, designing that application layers more so that we we get a full idea about this uh when you say application layer like where we are ha- hitting the services more yes, or some yes. yes we can pick up some topic where uh, where more it would have more to do with uh, kind of uh, services layer here also if you so can we, can both. yeah can we just discuss the final design that we came up with out of this interview and can we improve on it for 5 minutes so that uh it would be good right like whatever they are asking for sure uh yeah, fine sir, uh, <laughs> sorry to interrupt but i have a very basic question before we conclude so i was uh, the initial uh, thought i had was if we are using uh, like mysql as a database so what mm-hmm. all bottlenecks will it present in this case instead i am aware that you know the database size would increase but what all other bottlenecks will it have instead of using the hdfs or the aws s3 bucket uh i think dp covered that if you are going with relational database okay so if you are so 1 million users still can be handled by a relational database but if it grow then it could be a problem like 1 billion users that time we need some kind of uh, sharding or partition so, so one thing like uh, to- so- physical limit comes with relational database on uh, the disk as well as on the compute okay mm-hmm. now you should always look at uh, write operations with two things one is compute and one is storage and when mm-hmm. you talk about mysql or sql server or oracle system mm-hmm. the underlying disk will only support until 80000 iops or something okay okay your disk persistent storage will have that limit of iops hitting its roof we mm-hmm. face it on our application as well so you you cannot go beyond that iops limit on that disk so if you talk about one machine it will be uh, uh, associated with one disk which has that limit so mm-hmm. your write cannot go beyond that even if your application supports it even if your sql engine supports it that disk will always hit that bottleneck so you need to expand it to other distributed volumes so that is where the distribution of relational 
database systems is coming into a main picture like if you take cloud spanner or um, other databases that are offering these new uh, new techno technologies where they can distribute relational systems mm -hmm. as well right so so you need to understand those core areas like how they are accepting this challenge yeah, and I taking think... it to a larger scale yeah that that is actually a good point and i would i always uh, tend to get into discussion about a lot of times we tend in uh, we jump to no sequel just by saying relational cannot scale i don't quite agree with that because yes desk is definitely what you just articulated totally makes sense but i think when we are discussing system design uh, it is very important that we look into these days if you look at relational right uh, like there's there's not really a bottleneck in terms of distribution you can distribute relational data as well you can have raid configurations right where even if one disk becomes bottleneck you spread your data across different disk and you have these raid configurations i think the one of two of in my mind two of the made big uh, comparisons between relational and no sequel comes from the schema flexibility that is one the other is the join performance right joins in relational model are kind of known to be expensive they are like just inherently expensive and if you look at graph database or no sequel key value there you are you don't need joins you have your data laid out in a format that it's right there so um so one thing uh, that i wanted to bring up like i understand this part but uh, you know over a period of time as the requirement grows it is possible that you know you might have to change your uh, you know no sequel so picking no sequel in the first place might be you know very uh, difficult right so as this you know it becomes complicated maybe to start with it's a simple thing but as the uh, yeah. application grows then your links and references would increase and it might might, might get into a mess the no sequel thing so how did you how do you uh, do a logical thing that you know you we pick sql on sql that is yeah, something i that is a good question one point i have in mind is about going back to the nature of application if you are designing an application which absolutely needs consistency like 100% you cannot go with no sql there right like they are like eventual consistent if we go with acid versus base model right i think that is one core criteria we have to look at Uh, we cannot have a banking transaction going on a no sequel database we need relational which guarantees those kind of which provides those kind of guarantees um that is something that jumps to my mind but if others have i, I think it's very use case driven i mean we have to look at growth aspect we have to look at the core guarantees that we need from an application and then build on that but that's just my thought okay i think uh, we are only having another 5 or 10 minutes we can wrap it uh, wrap this thing or uh, or even uh, i thought uh, to hear something from vivek if he wants to add something yeah. might be he is not there okay for on me and the Uh, unmute button sorry so i think uh, great discussion overall i didn't have uh, a whole lot to add but uh, the the one uh, like major feedback that i have for uh, for dp would be uh, i think the there is a structure that you might want to follow uh, overall in terms of uh, uh, what you want to cover in the system design right like typically you want to start with uh, requirements gathering or exploration and then you want to do the high level design quickly I think you did a lot of good stuff there but mm -hmm. uh, but i think just i think i'd i'd encourage you to watch this uh, video and uh, and keep track of that because there was like a time when you were a little uh, uncomfortable with uh, with what was going on so you were like you know throwing out random ideas so there's mm -hmm. like you need to find a way to to uh, pull back and start thinking about it more uh, structurally so that is that is one piece that i think was uh, was missing right and I think uh, uh, Asim, you did a great job overall in in keeping the the ball in the right place and things like that. So as an interviewer, I think you did uh, fantastically well. So I, I didn't have any complaints on that one. Uh, I, and 
there were like a, a couple of uh, things that you guys were discussing on specific topics. I, I was not in a position where I could interrupt, so uh, I didn't want to. But uh, I, I think overall the discussion, the velocity, the pace, the concepts, they all made sense. If there's any specific question that you want me to address, I can answer those. So, so Vivek, I would like to ask, I mean, the question though we discussed here that so, so uh, throwing or, or talking about the technology which we are not comfortable, uh, is that, uh, or how we should handle that? So like uh, here, the example was uh, we, we use the, DP use the, the terms SDFS, SDFS. Or, or somebody if you say use S3 and they are not comfortable in that. So how how we should handle that in interview? Should we use the genetic term to like some sort of a storage? Is that okay? Or or we should actually come up with a specific? No, you should be using the terminology that you are comfortable with, right? So DP is familiar with HDFS and she can use HDFS or S3 then she'll use S3. Otherwise it doesn't make sense to to throw out uh, terminologies and technology names because uh, if the interviewer asks like one more round of like, why did you choose A versus B, which is what our team did, uh, you'll get a little stuck with that. So I, I would not ask, or I would not talk about technologies that I'm not familiar with in, in these interviews. Now, uh, specifically generic answers is, is sort of okay, but, uh, but that, but just means that you have not gotten there, right? In, in certain cases, like you could say that I'm just gonna use a data store and you can just abstract it and you can simply say I'll use a data store or like I'll use a file storage system and a pointer to that file uh, will be yeah. stored in my DB or something like that. And that is okay because then in that case, you're not really simply saying that, I you know, you could, you could have easily said, I'll use a file storage system like S3 or something like that. And then where the handle can be passed on or you can just ignore that, uh, the name of the file storage system. But then the point is that you're not talking about the file storage. At that point, you're, you're uh, moving your conversation away from, from the file storage. Okay. Yep. Oh, there was one uh, issue that I had with, with Asim's uh, uh, interviewing thing. Uh, and, and I'll just be like, you know, transparent and, and honest here. So one of the ways this was phrased, this mm -hmm. is a classic, like Dropbox is a classic newsfeed problem. It's like a Twitter, a Facebook, uh, uh, not Dropbox, Instagram. It's like a classic newsfeed problem where data is generated by multiple people and uh, data is viewed by multiple people and it's just a feed. The content of the feed is different. In one case, it is uh, messages and posts by people. In the other case, it's tweets. In this case, it's images mm -hmm. uh, or like Snapchat and, and things like that. Right? These are all one class of problems. And I think they be initially based on the... Uh, discussion, you are going towards like a Dropbox design of where like it's uploading, downloading and file sharing and image sharing. So yeah. uh, I think you, um, it, it's, it's for someone who has not seen Instagram or has not used Instagram, if they start thinking of this as, uh, you know, share an image, like if they think of it as Google Photos, for example, yeah. right? where it's a personal upload, personal photo album, and then you just share it. Uh, then, then the interviewer, uh, then the candidate will go in the completely wrong direction. So maybe a little bit of uh, reining in at that point of time would have been helpful. But I think you guys uh, came to the right course. It, there was a little bit of back and forth because of that, but that's, uh, but that was uh, salvaged in the interview. Sure, sure, yeah. Was good. Okay. I, hey, uh, I, I was trying to be like a really uh, crazy interviewer, <laughs> which gives like one statement and then rest of that is abstraction. So, but I think I should have, I, I, in a real interview, uh, it's better to give more context like what I'm looking for. Correct, correct. Now that, that makes, that, that, that's the only thing. Uh, P.S. I don't know if I answered your question. You asked the question I answered, but I don't know if that answered your question adequately. Oh yeah, you answered that question very well. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Anything else? I have maybe the last few, one or two minutes. Otherwise I'll hand it off to Asim to close it. Uh, yes, I have a question. So basically, there is a pattern in which, you know, uh, questions were asked and they were answered and driven the interview was driven in a certain way in a certain direction. So, uh, I mean, is there a pattern that we should follow uh, like this one or like, is there any other pattern that we should follow while answering the system design interview questions? So a system design interview question is uh, there is no preset pattern. There is no, there is no, there are no rules here at this point, right? At the end of the day, I think uh, someone else is talking about this as well. Like what are the interviewers looking for? 
And what is the goal? The goal is to assess whether you can take an abstract requirement and ask clarifying questions and, and arrive at the right set of requirements. And would you be able to uh, define or provide like a, a system design which can satisfy the asks that we have? And are you able to, are you considering the pros and cons and, and other aspects of it? Are you, you know, meaningfully thinking about your process? So the final product that you design is not as important as the journey that you take through the process. So, so that is what it is. Now, how would you go through this exercise? And Dippy and, uh, and Asim demonstrated one of the ways of doing it. And it was reasonably, you know, it, it talked about a bunch of different things and, and, and whatnot. There was, there was definitely a couple of uh, structural, like, you know, uh, process misses overall. Like, it, it was not, Dippy didn't follow, like, a linear thought process. She was jumping around here and there. Uh, a typical good interviewer, not being someone who is uh, uh, just hanging back, would, would probably try to bring you back in space uh, in the same line. But when they do that, they'll take away points for being unstructured, right? So the expectation from you as a candidate would be to maintain like a course of uh, how would you design this? Again, if taking a, take a step backwards, like forget about um, the interviewer as such, but imagine the interviewer being a client or someone who is a product manager providing requirements. They have no idea of the technology at this point. They have vague ideas of what it is. Now they're only providing you, they're only providing you the parameters of your system. Now you go design the system entirely. As a senior engineer, what kind of questions would you ask? What do you want to know? How would you choose what technologies, what kind of exploration that you'd want to do to get to that crux of it? Like is it millions of users, billions of users, gigabytes of data or petabytes of data? That, those are all the things that you will need to, to get there. Now, uh, there, is, there are things like, you know, uh, how many letters should I allow in the username is a stupid question to ask when you're trying to do this exploration, right? It's su super early in the equation to have those kind of, you know, finer grained items, right? So, so you have to make logical assumptions and, and move on and, and ask questions which are, which are relevant at that particular uh, point of time. I think Raza asked a question saying how uh, important are latency numbers? It, it largely depends on the system. Uh, for, for example, if someone's actually talking about a system that, uh, that does like Netflix as a system, that encodes videos in different formats for faster delivery. And this is like Asim talked about this around how when you upload a gigabyte video, they won't just store it and serve that gigabyte video to everyone. They will like, you know, reprocess it into smaller versions and whatnot. Like YouTube does that as well. When you upload the video to YouTube, it does like a processing step, right? Now, uh, how long can the processing step be? Can it be like, should it be one second, two seconds? Or can it be five minutes? Can it be 30 minutes, one hour? To a large extent, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, unless you're talking about three hours, four hours, five hours, even then it's okay, right? People can wait for that much. So different systems are latency tolerant and different systems are they latency intensive. So you will have to figure out which parts of your systems are, are latency tolerant and which ones are, uh, are intensive. I think Dippy's point here was around, she sacrificed the, the consistency part of it for availability and partition tolerance. And that, essentially shows up as a latency issue, right? The time I post a picture and in an Instagram and the time Dippy will see it would, can be different. It can be a few minutes versus uh, uh, a C might be able to see it immediately because he is in a cluster that is getting updated first and things like that. And there the latency would be measured as the time that the last of my friends will get to see my picture. And the system is latency tolerant. It can even be days if uh, for certain scenarios and, and you're probably okay uh, and given that these things get generated often uh, it, i wouldn't be super worried about it so again long-winded answer here uh, raza but point is uh, it's a process and you just have to walk through uh, these different aspects what are the different things you will need as a senior engineer to design the system and even implement it um, and and there will be and i'm assuming there'll be hundreds of more questions you'll ask but that those things are uh, later. Uh, can you also answer about uh, the numbers that we are talking about? I mean, uh, uh, the number, the APA rate limit is, I mean, the APA number of hit requests or something like that. And uh, uh, we will, we do we need to do storage estimations and these all? More likely than not, yes. Uh, different companies have different mechanisms. Like I have seen uh, Amazon interviews has been a hit or miss. 
uh, many interviews they do go through some basic uh, behind the back of the envelope calculation uh, i think if i remember correctly google and uh, and facebook and netflix i think they insist on this like this is like a very essential part of their uh, calculation uh, so it's it's a hit or miss uh, but I, if i were like I, I, on the other hand uh like a sense of like why what amazon asked for as far as i've seen is uh, they expect you to uh, to calculate the the rates and things like that not for rate limiting purposes but to decide what kind of system will you put in place will you add a queue will you add something else so the the focus is more on what kind of components you put in and uh, i think uh, facebook and google interviews as far as i have heard uh, they focus explicitly on like you know how many computers would you need to run the system Uh, and things like that uh, and you you need the skill as a day to day on a day to day basis even at amazon like when i was there we were doing we were constantly doing scaling estimates and trying to figure out like you know how many uh, whatever if uh, how many ec2 instances we need to run uh, in terms of the compute how much memory do we need to keep for everything and things like that we need to do that for our uh, q4 scaling we would estimate how much uh, capacity uh um, how much like bandwidth we will need and how much uh, the score capacity the how much traffic we are expecting and then we would scale based on that so we need to do all of that and it's a, it's a very common activity uh but it's just uh, i don't think facebook uh, like facebook and uh, looks like google and other places they seem to ask for it as a part of it whereas uh, amazon seems to not ask for it but you never know that you could get an interviewer who just went through the q4 scale scaling exercise and would you they can't test every aspect of your skill they would test some aspect of it and extrapolate based on that so nothing prevents you prevents an interviewer from asking this in any of these companies and this is an essential skill yeah actually i mean uh, you will do capacity planning and this all but uh, that requires good understanding of the system as well right i mean uh, uh, actually no it doesn't right you are you are you are doing approximation so the mechanism is what we are trying to test i mean it's uh, let me ask you a different question right like uh, imagine you are hosting a dinner and and there's going to be people coming in uh, how much food should i prepare you are estimating now right your first question will be like how many people i need to know that and then i'll say okay 12 people then your next question is like you know how many adults and how many kids because you know that adults and kids eat at different levels or different rates and then then your next question would be like you know any special request like how many vegetarians how many whatever and what not so that you can start preparing like your you can start figuring out your your uh, items in the same vein here also for your latency you will need to uh, understand like is your system uh, capacity constrained in terms of latency in terms of uh, throughput in terms of disk in terms of cpu and then you will start throwing in uh some estimates around like you know oh yeah if uh, this, it looks like it's going to be about 1500 tps is what i need to handle a typical computer that i would know of like a normal compute instance can handle like 500 tps so i would need three computers per cluster or something like that and this is what comes from experience like if you have no idea what uh, like you're not going to say that oh you know what i'll do i'll i'll create a single instance put all the i'll write the code first put it in there and then i will run a performance test find out exactly what the maximum tps it can take and then i will use that to scale it is not something that you can do on a on a regular basis uh, i mean it for most computing uh, most problems that you're solving the mechanism you would do uh, you would do is uh, is just a rough approximation and then uh, and then go based on that so think of it like how would you how would you plan for certain things like you know how would you uh, estimate how would you fit furniture in a house or whatever right you would have like a sense of what goes where and you would be mostly you know you'd leave a buffer in place here and there and that should be okay uh, and in many cases the interviewers are looking for uh, for discrepancies which are order of magnitude like if you had come and told me that you would need 10000 computers to run this thing and when i was expecting a number in single digits i would be worried like i know you made a mistake somewhere and you probably you know flipped the numerator and denominator in one of the equations or something like that so that's what uh, how i would be looking at it so i i don't buy the theory around the, hey we need super uh, specific details about the systems before you can provide like rough estimates does that make sense yeah yeah i, I know we're going a little over um um we let's let's pick it up uh, i think the system design chat is a good place to ask more questions in discord group 
and uh, on top of that uh, just watch previous videos naga has covered a lot of these concepts that i'm saying uh, there are a few uh, in person sessions that are recorded as well where we talk about how to answer system design questions and what structure and method to follow uh, so those, those are all there for you to consume these things don't change over uh, over a long period of time so the process remains the same technologies might change like 3 years ago we wouldn't have known certain technologies that have just spawned up but i think still the concept of exploring the problem and breaking it down those things are are still fundamental skills so i would focus on those and i would also focus on uh, reading the interviewers uh, like what where are they going with it like you know generally try not to interrupt the interviewer when they are speaking uh, try to uh, clarify and confirm like so if i hear you correctly this is what you said and rather than make assumptions about what they said and things so these are like few small tips here and there that you will see Uh, this is regardless of whether it's a system design interview or a coding interview i mean the concept remains the same right about understanding what the interviewer is looking for and uh, delivering to that so with that uh, i think i want to hand it off to you asim to just uh, close this and then uh, we're done thanks vivek yeah thank you vivek and thank you everyone but uh, i would like to extend my <clears throat> thank you to dp because it's always uh, uh difficult to be interview and and do in front of large audience and get the feedback and that's a brave heart i will say <laughs> no thanks absolutely yeah. absolutely second that yeah thanks dpa thanks hasim it was a great session so sure, thanks and thanks for yeah. participating everyone it's like great feedback yeah wonderful